Okay, uh, today what we're going to do, we're going to do a basic uh, introduction to the Rhino work environment, and we're going to learn some basic modeling techniques to construct our uh, castle designs. And, and if you go over here and you look at some of these, you'll notice that most of these castle designs are built from basic geometric primitives. Okay, and that you can use basic geometric primitives to work out the massing for these uh, for this cast for these castle designs. And here we have several references that you can look at in order to uh, be inspired in your designs. Note that you have total creative freedom. Uh, and as you look at some of the examples, you'll see that some of the castle designs are very surreal. They're almost like space satellite stations. Uh, I'm allowing you to interpret castle in the broadest ways possible. Also remember that throughout the quarter, whenever you come to a time where you're thinking about doing something and you're wondering about whether or not you should do it, or what would Professor Scott think of you doing something, always go for it. I will always tell you to go for it. So don't ever uh, inhibit yourself uh, creatively in any way because of what you might think. I would, I would think about it. I would always tell you to go for it. Always tell you to go for it. And oftentimes, uh, risk-taking is always rewarded. Risk taking is always rewarded. Uh, I'd rather you take risks than fail, than just be really conservative and have a humdrum success. So risk taking is always rewarded. But you can notice that even the most complex castle, and a lot of times when you're modeling, you have to think about how to break up your form down to sort of like the root components that are used to create it. So in looking at this castle, it's really clear that we have like um, that we have rectangular, rectilinear blocks, we have cylindrical blocks, and we have conic sections, that conic blocks that are used to compose that. And when you're working on your castle design, you should think about how you can generate the basic massing of it using uh, your basic primitive shapes. Now, in Rhino, uh, we're going to go over. Uh, several things. We're going to use this uh, project as a means of exploring several things. We're going to use it as an introduction to our basic Rhino environment. We're going to work primarily with our primitives. So if you were to go over here to your, uh, your little square there, one of the things that you can do in Rhino is to click on it and then drag it out and you can bring that menu out into your workspace so that it becomes a part of your workspace. Or you could, um, uh, so you could do that in that way. Uh, and we're also going to learn how to organize things into layers. And uh, we're going to learn about rotations, scales, and placements. We're going to learn how to copy things. And we're going to learn some basic uh, Boolean solid modeling techniques. So there's a lot of things that we're going to cover today uh, during uh, this demonstration. And so I'd like for you to just follow along with me. And I'm going to try to move uh, kind of slow so that everyone can follow along. I just ask that you uh, pay attention as we are uh, doing, our, doing our work today during this, during this session. OK. Uh, when we look at our basic Rhino environment, let's start out by dragging out a, um, a box shape like so. And you notice that now we're in corner-corner uh, uh, mode, and we can draw, drag out a box shape like so. We drag out the height, and then we... Uh, we drag out the length and the width in the top window, and then we can come over to the right window and give it its depth. If you right click, if you select an object by clicking on it with your left mouse button, and you right click over here on this magnifying glass, that's your zoom selected. It'll center whatever you have uh, uh, selected. 
in this case. Um, now, this is one way of creating a rectilinear uh, shape. Okay? Um, note that, so here you have your command line. Okay? Um, you can create this shape by dragging it out, clicking on its icon right there, and dragging it out as we've done here. You can also come over to uh, your solid box corner corner height, do it there. Um, you could also, uh, there's the command box, so if you come over to the command line you type in box. Uh, you could do it that way also. So always note there's always about three different ways that you can accomplish the same thing from within Rhino. Okay? Uh, these are using your solids. Okay? The other way to create a box, and this is the way that you should get used to it, let me turn off my ortho snap for right now, is that you can come over here to your uh, curve tools and you can go over to your rectangle tool and you could draw a box shape like so. Okay? And now that you've drawn your box shape, what you could do is that you could type in the command extrude curve into your command line. It'll ask you to select the curve to extrude. You select with your left mouse button. You can press enter by clicking on your right mouse button. Okay? Now, whenever you execute a command in Rhino, it gives you options which are located here in the command line. So now you notice that with my box, right? It says both sides, yes, which means that it's taking that curve and it's extruding it on both sides of the curve. Do you see that? It's extruding it on both sides of the curve. See, that's the root curve right there. When I extrude it to get my depth, it's doing it on both sides. You can see it here and here also. Okay? I want to change that to no for this, in this case. So now it's only extruding it on one side. Okay? Right now, I have solids set to no, so I'm getting a, a shell, right? If I set that to yes, now I get a solid, okay? Delete input is set to no, which means that it will keep my curve after the operation is done. If I wanted to get rid of the curve, uh, I could say yes, and it would delete the curve once it's finish that operation. So I could go here like that and just click there like so and be done. Okay? So you can use your curves. You can create curves and use those to uh, generate your extrusion objects. Uh, and there are many different types of curves. Like you might want to use a polyline curve. That might be a good one in this case. Because here you could create a, a shape. I might want to turn on some snaps in a second, but I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. In there, that's closed. Now, nice thing about Rhino, if you want to um, execute a command again, you can come up here and you can go extrude curve. You can drag it there. You can also select that and right-click again. Oops, I got my polyline tool, wrong command. I'm going to do extrude curve, and it does that again, like so. Okay. And so if there's like a specific shape that you might want to extrude for your castle or a specific footprint that you might want to create, you can do it in, in that way. Okay? Uh, I'm going to pause this for a second. Okay?